Good morning and welcome to our online worship service from Bridgewater United Church. We are glad you've joined us and encourage you to share this with others and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's vacation season and we're thrilled to have a number of wonderful speakers join us with messages that inspire and challenge us. We want to thank each of you for choosing to be united with us. Our community is truly a place where everyone belongs. Now here's Jeff. Well, good morning and thank you for joining us this morning for our Be United worship. We're glad that you're here. It's vacation time, so in the next coming Sundays, you're gonna hear from some very uh, special, wonderful people sharing inspirational messages with us. But in the meantime, my friends, let's just join our voices, unite our spirits together as we worship. Let's begin with the lighting of our inclusivity in Christ candles and the singing of our Be United Chorus. Let us just uh, take a moment to still ourselves and connect with, with God and each other and draw closer. Search me, O oh God, and know my thoughts. Nothing is hidden from you. Join me in our opening prayer. This was written by Caitlin Curtis. You are the stillness in this place. Holy One, kingdom come. Embrace us here now. Speak into our hollow places where we have lost our words and find only utterances, only experiences and observations to teach us who you are. Secure us by your kind mercy. Jesus, speak in the quiet. Give us rest. Amen.
Kenya Alliance for Advancement of Children, CAC, is a child rights advocacy organization. We have established over 300 child rights networks in Kisumu alone. And we have other child rights clubs that have been established in other areas, in secondary schools, primary school, and informal groups in the community. Those child rights clubs have facilitated proper understanding on children's issues, has brought a lot of understanding, good relationship between teachers and pupils that has resulted to retention and full enrollment of children in school. But then at times we'll go to visit a club and five or six of the members are missing. So we developed interest and asked what could be the driving force? What is forcing these children not to be in school on a day that they should be in school? So the first reason was not every child could pay school fees. My name is Viviana Kenyu. I'm a total orphan and I'm, now I'm raised by a well-wisher who rescued me in a certain place called Asembo. Around Form 2, I dropped out of school because of school fees when I was sent away by the principal. So we compared between the boy child and the girl child, who is most vulnerable? We learned that boys could easily, after basic primary, uh, get into this manual work, get money and start a family. But ladies, girls were becoming more vulnerable to issues of sexual abuse, physical abuse, when they get into issues of child labor. So we decided to talk to some of our partners in the networks. I think that is when we approached you, United Church of Canada and they gave us some money that has helped us to support girls to keep them in school. I met CAC organization people who raised my school fees and I went back to school. And I did my secondary education in 2017. And nowadays I'm planning, I have a job that I'm, I'm raising just a small amount and I'm planning to go back to school where I'm going to pursue um, Bachelor of Science in Economics and Mathematics. I'm planning to, to help those who are poor, those who are coming from the low background, or those who are maybe street children, so as they can build up our nation. I want to appreciate the support and the partnership that we've had with the United Church of Canada. It is uh, one, of, one, one of our longest serving partners, and I don't see us leaving each other soon. Yeah, I can tell Canada that we are just like us, we are just like Africans. Yani we are one in terms of all. And I know that if we work together, then we shall make something that is constructive to help raise the younger children. Your contributions to the Mission and Service Fund of the United Church of Canada help make programs like this possible. Thank you and please continue to give. Well, even though it's vacation season, our ministry continues. And so I just want to invite you to continue to support us. We very much appreciate your generosity and your love. Thank you, and God bless. The scripture reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 44, verses 6 to 8. This is what the Lord says, Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty. I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. Who then is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and lay out before me what has happened since I established my ancient people and what is yet to come. Yes, let them foretell what will come. Do not tremble, do not be afraid. Did I not proclaim this and foretell it long ago? You were my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? No, there is no other rock. I know not one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I'm so grateful today that the Be United community gets to hear a message from the Reverend Allison Etter, 
Allison's mother is a part of our Bridgewater United Church community. And we thank you, Allison, for being with us today. Friends, it is a great pleasure for me to be here with you today, able to connect across the internet. My name is Allison Edder. I'm the minister at Knox and Warden United Churches in Glace Bay. And I want to say thank you to Reverend Jeff for inviting me to share in your worship today, giving me the opportunity to say hello to some old friends and hello to some new friends. If we haven't had the opportunity to meet, I hope our paths will cross at some point in the months ahead. Will you pray with me? Oh God, with every breath, may we know your presence in us. Amen. I know many of you will remember Wild E. Coyote and the Roadrunner, an animated series first created back in 1948 by Chuck Jones. It's continued almost to the present day. The premise of the cartoon is that Wiley Coyote wants to catch the Roadrunner, a, a fast running bird, and he uses all kinds of fancy equipment to try to do it, but he always fails. There's a lot of funny moments in the series, but one of the funniest, which happens more than once, is when Wild E. Coyote runs right off the edge of the cliff, and he keeps going through the air until he realizes there's no ground beneath his feet, and then he falls. The creator Chuck Jones said this was one of the rules he worked with in creating the series. Whenever possible, he said, gravity should be the coyote's greatest enemy. So in the 1952 episode called Beep Beep, Wild E. Coyote orders a pair of rocket-powered roller skates, which uh, move so fast that he, he rolls right off the edge of one cliff, through the air onto another cliff, and then he's rocketed up into the air where he hangs suspended for several seconds before he realizes the ground is gone and then he falls. I don't know about you, but for me, these past few months have felt a little like that. Like I was going along steadily, probably not on roller skates, but, but steady all the same, making my way through the days and weeks and working on various projects. And then mid-March, all of a sudden, it was like the ground was gone. We were looking around for something solid to hold on to, and it wasn't there. So many plans had to be changed from trips to graduation ceremonies, job opportunities, even surgery and other medical treatment. And of course, our churches had to change quickly. It would be fair to say it was like the solid ground, what was familiar, just disappeared. The Christian writer and former priest Nathan Monk wrote a couple of weeks ago about a grocery shopping trip he took recently when he felt a feeling of panic and lack of the familiar. He wrote that he, he usually used to go grocery shopping with his family, but in these times, stores are asking um, the fewer people as possible to go into the store. So he was alone and he was finding it a bit hard to complete the task without help who was already anxious by the time he reached the cashier. And he learned when he got to the cashier that only the self-checkout was available. Here's what he writes. I suddenly felt like I couldn't breathe. I turned around and slumped a bit. I slammed into the shopping cart some almond butter that I had set too precariously on the edge of the cart fell to its demise and smashed on the ground. My mask felt like it was consuming my face. In the end, he says he got through the experience okay, and he encourages his readers to continue wearing face masks. But his story made me think about the many difficult moments, even moments of distress that folks have been experiencing in these months. I hear a lot of talk about the new normal 
this is the new normal. That's what people say. But honestly, to me, this does not feel normal. What we're being asked to do to, to stay apart from many of the people we love, to use extra care every time we leave the house, to be constantly thinking about our own health and the health of others. It's important, but it's not easy. The disruption of our routines and having to go without many of the things we love, it's hard and you're not alone if you feel like the ground is gone. I'm part of an organization called YES, which uh, organizes gatherings of community leaders around the world. And they use the image of three concentric circles to describe human experience. They call these the three zones. So the middle circle, that's the smallest one, is the comfort zone, and that's where everything is familiar. Then the, the next circle is called the stretch zone, and that's when we stretch past the familiar. It's uncomfortable by definition, but that's how we learn and grow, by trying new things, reaching out to new people, embracing new experiences. We, we stretch ourselves, and I would say that's even how we learn to love. Certainly, that's how we learn to be disciples of Jesus, the teacher who, who never stuck to what was comfortable, but always chose to do what was right. Stretch. I believe that's what he would tell us. Stretch. But then beyond the stretch zone, there's a third zone, the biggest circle, and that's where we are stretched too far. That's where it feels like we've gone to the edge of the cliff and kept going, and now we feel like we're floating in the air. If you've been there, you're not alone. The prophet Isaiah has a message for you. They call this third zone the panic zone, even though outward panic is not always what it looks like. For some people, it's more like freezing up or lashing out or even shutting down. But what defines this zone is we've, we've been stretched too far to learn, listen, grow, or I would say love. When it feels like the ground is gone under our feet, it's hard to think about anything or anyone, but please don't let me fall. And, and I think we're seeing a few signs of this. There was that go home message left on Benjamin Hebb's windshield. There are the attacks and angry messages on social media. People jumping to conclusions and aggressively putting forward uninformed opinions. There are store clerks who say they've been yelled at when they ask people to put on a mask or wash their hands. And there is beginning to be a sense of suspicion or fear. We've all been stretched. Some of us stretched too far beyond our ability to be patient, thoughtful, and kind. The author of the second part of the book of Isaiah also lived in tumultuous times. Many of the Israelites were living in Babylon where they had been taken as exiles or captives after Jerusalem was destroyed in war. They had been there for decades. New generations had been born but then the year Cyrus the Great became the ruler of Babylon, he said to the Israelites, you're free to go. Then 
they faced a whole new set of dangers. The journey from Babylon back to Jerusalem wasn't an easy one. It required trekking through the desert, where they would face the dangers of the desert, uneven terrain, wild animals, hunger, thirst, extreme heat. They were all afraid, and some did not want to go. I'd rather remain in my comfort zone, they said. If I set foot in that desert, I'm going to be stretched too far. It would feel like falling to leave everything that's familiar behind. Babylon is not great, but it's what we know will stay here. The message of the prophet Isaiah was for them and also for us for a time like our time. When you feel like you're falling, flailing about, searching for solid ground, God is the rock beneath your feet. When everything else feels unsteady, God is solid. Go, Isaiah told the Israelites, embrace the future with courage and trust. It says it's an important message, it seems to me, because many of us mistake God for the comfort zone. I've heard this from many people. When I enter the church, people tend to say, when I enter the church, everything is so familiar from the art on the walls, to the hymns we sing, even to the way the church smells. It's so familiar, it makes me feel safe. And God does make us feel safe. God is like a rock, steady and solid beneath us. But God does not say to us, stick to the familiar. God says, go, 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 go. Stretch, set out into the desert, face the unknown, be brave, be free, learn, grow. Even in the unfamiliar, I'll be there. Whether it's a new job, a new class, a new relationship, or a new way to pray, Stretch past the familiar. It's hard, but you can do it, Isaiah promises. You can do it because when you feel like you've been stretched too far, when you've lost your footing, when you feel like you're falling and you don't know where you're going to land, God will be there. The rock beneath everything, the first and the last, he writes, the source of love that never ends, also the source of courage in facing the unknown. The one who says, according to the prophet Isaiah, do not be afraid. Friends, these times are, are not normal. Things are changing fast. The case numbers are going up and down. Restrictions are changing. It's very hard to predict the future. We really don't know what the months ahead will bring. I want to wish you the blessing of trust. May you have the courage to step out into the air unknowing. And may you find God already there beneath your feet. In the words of the writer Ruth Burgess, may you be strong and happy and creative. May you be cradled and held in love. Amen. Will you pray with me? 
O oh God, our Creator, we give thanks for your presence among us and within us. Thank you, God, for the beauty of the world you made, for every plant, flower, and tree, for every animal, birds, fish, deer, and porcupine. Thank you for these days of summer, for the opportunity to rest, and for the gift of peace. And we pray today for all your people and all your creation. For anyone who is feeling unsteady, fearful, or alone. We remember especially those who are struggling with illness and those who care for them. For all of those regions and countries struggling with COVID-19. For those who are separated from their families. We pray for children and young people that they will grow surrounded by love and joy. As teachers prepare to return to school in September, we pray for safety. We pray today for anyone who has grown weary, for those who feel a sense of discouragement or despair. For those who worry about what the future will bring. God, will you give your gift of peace to all people? And as you taught, we pray for our enemies. For those who have hurt us and others. For anyone who chooses violence as a response to struggle, for those who aim to harm or destroy, and for those whose lives have been overtaken by greed, we pray. We know you love every person and we long for healing and reconciliation between all people. And finally, we pray for ourselves. Every day, God, through the ups and downs of life, in times of sickness and health, in times of joy and times of fear, when we feel alone, may we know your presence in us. And will you give us your own gifts of courage and compassion so that we may be true followers of Jesus in this world? We pray this in Jesus' own name. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thee will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For then is the kingdom, the power of glo and glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us and a special thank you to our special guest speaker today. And now my friends, may you indeed know the wonderful blessing you are and that others are to you. May it be so. Amen.